Hey everyone, welcome to Watch It Paint It. I'm Benson and today we've been painting the bystander model from Batman Gotham City Chronicles board game. Once again we'll mainly be using contrast paints to get these guys done as quick as we can, up to a decent level so we can get on with playing the game. Okay, so here's Ben doing the priming for me. It's nice to feel looked after, isn't it? We're using the Wraithbone primer, the primer specifically designed for use with contrast paints. And to start with we just give the can a really good shake to mix the paint up. Then, starting just to the side of each model, we move the can across in nice even bursts. He works the angles, of course, to uh, ensure nice even coverage and flex those powerful forearms for the camera. We won't discuss how he forearms got so powerful. Probably dry brushing. He does a lot of dry brushing, right? And then, uh, when that's all finished, of course, we uh, turn the can upside down and empty the nozzle with a quick upside down burst. And now the real work begins. So I'm starting with Militarum Green, the contrast paint, and we're doing this gentleman's overcoat. Here you can see it goes on nicely. It's brighter on the raised parts, but sinking into the creases, the joints, the folds to create that realistic shadow we always look for. I do feel this is where contrast paint really excels. Uh, painting cloth, particularly crease cloth, a single coat of this, does the work of a base coat, a wash, and a highlight using the traditional method. So we do the body here both of the arms and of course his collar. Now we're trying really carefully not to overlap onto any of the other parts of the model. The, one of the slight problems uh, with contrast is it doesn't layer very well at all um, and it can be a real effort to tidy mistakes. It's quicker to actually do this slowly and carefully to avoid mistakes and having to reapply the undercoat colour before painting the next contrast colour on. So it's quicker to be slow, if that makes sense. The bystander has a little hat here, a beanie I think they're called. And I paint this, again using contrast, and this one is Dark Angel Green. Now this is a thicker paint, so we're doing it in a, a thinner coat first is probably a better idea to get the right consistency. Next up, Agros Dunes, and this is applied to his trousers. Now I've slept in my clothes over the odd weekend bender. I have never achieved this level of creasage, so that's impressive. And it's also ideal for contrast, which we're finding works a lot better on textured surfaces rather than the flat. Like all good chinos, we're doing these a nice sort of sandy brown colour. I guess it hides the dirt, if nothing else. And with one quick layer all over the uh, trousers, we are done. Then we are back to Dark Angel's green. Nothing like a bit of forward planning when you're painting, eh? Um, we're using this on his uh, undercoat. It may be a waistcoat, maybe just a lining, I'm not sure. But we'll stick to the green and just go for a darker option here. Now we're being extra careful not to get this on his t-shirt, which will be quite a pale colour, or on his outer coat, which we've already painted. Now it's time for Skeleton Horde on his t-shirt. Quite a yellowy brown, just to tint his t-shirt to a sort of off-white colour. Necromancer Cloak by Army Painter is my colour of choice for his boots here. I often use a dark grey for things I want to be black, as it allows me to use a black wash to add shadows and depth to the model. And I always think it's, it's easier to highlight up from grey, as any highlights on matte black always seem to come across as quite stark. I mean, that's great for making the model pop, but for a more realistic gradual blend, I do prefer to use grey. I don't yet own the black contrast paint Black Templar. I would have liked to have tried that instead. Now I had to leave at this point, just as the base needed painting. What a coincidence! So up step Ben to take over and finish this mini off. Now he's continuing with Necromancer Cloak, and painting this right across the top side of the base, and then just going around the edge as well to get a nice even coverage. Ben then takes his Survivor Skin Paint by Army Painter, and applies this with his Redgrass Games Double Zero brush to the face. He changes to this brush as it has a really great tip, very sharp, and that makes it a lot easier and a lot tidier to do the detail work. Also, as you can just see at the end of the sleeves, the little hands poking out, he does those, and he's being extra, extra careful not to get any of the flesh colour on any of the areas we've already painted. That would not go down well with me. And next up is another army painter colour. This time it's matte white, and Ben uses this to get stuck right in doing the eyes. He's going to want a steady hand here. Don't want any little uh, accidents now, do we? Ben also uses this white on the beard as well. Sort of a base coat um, to brighten the colour up a little before he'll use a wash later on to bring out the detail in it and obviously darken it down somewhat as well. Also as you can see he'll uh, very carefully do the hair poking out um, around the back of the collar and underneath the beanie hat. You're gonna have to be really careful uh, doing this bit to ensure that he doesn't spread paint on areas already painted. 
matte black by army painter is up next and Ben uses this to paint the bottle just poking out of his pocket. Now I've always preferred hiding my alcohol with the flask on an inside pocket or something. Keep it secret, keep it safe, but not so the bystander, he's not shy. He keeps his drink where he can get easy access, just poking up out of his pocket. Ben actually does a sneaky switch here, swapping to Waystone Green, a Citadel technical paint, which I suppose is a more traditional colour for a wine bottle. He also makes sure to test this paint on his nail. I imagine he's probably going out later. He wants to paint his nails, make sure he looks his fabulous best. An army painter flesh wash then finishes off the face and the hands, bringing out some shadow around the eye sockets and around the uh, cheekbones there and also separating all the fingers so you can see those stand out on the hand. Another army painter colour next, this time it's dark tone, a blackish wash which we use all over his beard, and this makes his beard grey and makes the recesses nice and dark and sort of high contrast. This colour is also used to add a little bit of shadow and darken up those boots that we painted grey earlier. Finally for this colour, Ben splurges some across the base um, and that adds a little bit of depth and texture, bringing out some of the cracks in the pavement. Then, as is traditional for Ben now, a layer of matte black around the rim finishes off the base, how he often does, keeping it simple to not draw attention away from the figure itself. Then, to finish off the model, a couple of little optional details, just using machine gun metal from Army Painter again to paint in the lid of the wine bottle. No corks here, we're not that classy. And then there's a few little buttons on the coat as well. This is an optional step, but for very little effort, it does add a nice bit of final detail to the model. And that's it, we're all done. So I'll hand over to Ben for his final thoughts. Thanks for watching and listening to me ramble. Here's Ben. Hey everyone, welcome to Watch It. Wait, what? No, that's not right. I hope you enjoyed listening to Benson there. I really appreciate him helping out with the audio. Let's do a big up Benson. Give him a like, give him a comment below. Let him know we appreciate it. The, making the content is difficult and the audio is one of the trickiest bits, so I'm sure you'll appreciate some love. Now, bringing back to the models, I didn't know how I was going to record the audio. I didn't know if I'd be in it with Benson, so I didn't actually tell him, but I used two primers on this. One was the Citadel's Rafe Bone Contrast Primer, and another was the Army Painter's Skeleton Bone, just a normal primer. I wanted to see if there was any difference. For it, I'll cover that in a future video, but for this one, Benson didn't even notice that it was slightly different colours and... You can look at these models, I've interlaced them, one GW, one army painter, can you see any difference? Now the eyes worked out really, really well for this one. I thought about messing one up on purpose, just for fun. Luckily I didn't need to. Ugh, they're so small and so fiddly, but I'm actually growing, I'm really enjoying having dodgy eyes, especially just one of them. I think when you're playing the games, it makes it a lot of fun for people to pick up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get, they get they get bored of, yes, you can paint, yes, they look nice, but having a laugh at, at your mistakes is, is fun for everybody. So yeah, luckily I didn't need to do it on purpose. It comes naturally to me. Now back to the, the primers, yeah, I couldn't really tell any difference. I think one's come out a bit lighter than the other just because it is a lighter primer to begin with. The skeleton bone is slightly darker yellow, a brighter, not, not brighter, more saturated yellow so i think it's left the clothes looking a little bit darker overall but i still think the contrast paint applied the same i'll cover it in a later video but yeah 20 25 30 minutes per miniature can't really complain another four miniatures done the game's going to be ready to play soon i'm looking forward to it anyway as i mentioned before do big up benson thank you all ever so much for watching just remember you've now watched it off you go and paint it see you again next week